Hello, my name is Lenny Gay, and I repair computers at Awesome Repair System Enterprises. And I'm Mike Gay, and I'm currently unemployed and battling substance abuse. And we're, we're the, the Super, Super Gay, Gay Bros. Bros. Myself, Mike, and Mike's editor slash drug dealer Terry decided we wanted to start making gaming reviews. With my intellect, Terry's lackluster skill behind the camera, and whatever the fuck Mike has, we decide to make informative and entertaining reviews for upcoming games. Shall we get started, Mike? Yeah, yeah, uh, whatever, sure. If you've ever wondered what a game based on modern day America would look like, you're in for a treat, because Wasteland 3 is now upon us. It's a near perfect representation of our world, and I commend in exile for their accuracy and attention to detail. Joking aside, it's easy to you compare- You were joking? I thought this was based off of present-day America. It's easy to compare many of the social issues this game tackles with many of the problems we have in today's world. That's probably what the disclaimer in the beginning of the game is for. You don't want people confusing real life with a video game, which has a cat that travels with you, smokes cigarettes, and wears a sheriff's hat. Yeah, good thing they have that disclaimer, right? If you ever wondered what Fallout would be like if it wasn't handed off to the Bethesda Overlords, the Wasteland series is definitely it. It's an extremely deep and extremely engaging isometric RPG from Anexile Entertainment, and I'm happy to say, Wasteland 3 is everything I was hoping for. If you're a newcomer to the series like myself, no worries. You're not expected to have played the previous games to fully appreciate this one in all its depressing detail. Before we jump into the juicy details of Wasteland 3, we just have to tell you guys we critique our games based off of a state-of-the-art rating system our neighbor and editor has created for us. Uh, what did you have in mind? That system is the ASS system, or ASS for short. That's aesthetics, sound, story, structure, and last but not least, the very important social progressiveness rating. With that out of the way, let's jump into the American Wasteland 3, The Quest for Peace. Let's start with the story first. You again take control of the Arizona Rangers, an outfit of lawbringers whose sole duty is to uphold peace and order in a world which has no rules. Six years have passed since the events of the last game, and the Rangers are on their last legs. Desperate for food and supplies, the Rangers are on the verge of extinction. Not unlike our situation. With nowhere else to turn, the Rangers are contacted by the Patriarch, a powerful leader who controls much of Colorado and its inhabitants, and also a guy who has his own face embedded into his currency. He offers the Rangers an abundance of food and supplies if they agree to travel to Colorado and assist him with an undisclosed task. The Rangers agree to these terms and set out to Colorado only to be ambushed by a group of bloodthirsty assholes who call themselves the Dorseys. And this is where your journey begins. Throughout your 60 plus hour adventure through Colorado's beautiful snowy landscapes, you'll be introduced to the many different people and ideologies who inhabit this world. What brings you here? The Gippers, a cult of Ronald Reagan freaks who control the oil in the area. It is irrelevant. Whether one is communist. Co -co communist? Communist? The hundred families whose purpose is to make America great again. The Wastelander refugees, a group of people who fell victim to the ruthless gangs of the East. These are just a few of the many assholes and weirdos you'll meet who are vying for control of the Colorado. This ain't worth the lives of my boys. I'll go quietly. Learning about all of these factions and what they stand for is a big part of why Wasteland 3 is such a special game. You'll soon learn that things aren't what they seem, and having to choose who to help in this world will definitely make you think. Now then, help yourself to some shabbies, and let's get down to business, shall we? As you, as you know, as you know, no, no. Being absorbed into this world and its stories are a testament to Wasteland 3's outstanding writing. Being able to juggle such dark themes and issues with the silliness of its world and characters is what gives this game so much charm. 
The game will respectfully attempt to dissect various issues such as the treatment of refugees and slavery, while at the same time, have two NPCs talk about one of their wives pleasuring herself with a vibrating drone mechanism. Um, like what you do when I leave the apartment to get beer? Let's talk about the gameplay. In the beginning of the game, you can either choose from a set of god-ugly pre-made characters, or you can make your own from scratch, which still looks god-ugly. Sadly, the character creation left a lot to be desired. You're not given a lot of customization options. And I would also like to say I'd probably have an easier time choosing which shit-covered stick to use to gouge my eyes out than having to choose which facial preset to use on my characters. These facial presets are the thing of nightmares. I'll agree with you there, Mike, but to be fair, it won't matter much since you won't be looking at these characters up close most of the time. Shortly after creating your duo of badassery, you're given a Ranger HQ, where you'll spend a lot of time buying new gear, chatting with folks, and also recruiting new talent to your roster. Besides recruiting from your base, you'll be able to find companions in the world either by exploring the wastes or by following the main quest. It's then up to you to decide how you want to allocate your skills and abilities for your playstyle. Having a diverse team is key, and you're going to want to make sure each member is focusing on only 4-5 to five skills to prevent falling short by the later parts of the game, and ending up like Swiss cheese. The toaster repair skill also makes a return in Wasteland 3. Apparently toasters hold great gear in the apocalypse. That's a skill we're going to need to know in a couple years when the world goes to shit if we don't want to end up like Toast. The game is considerably more action heavy than our last outing in the Wasteland, and I'm happy to say the combat has improved in many ways. For instance, on your turn you're no longer stuck to commanding each unit one by one. You're free to command each member of your squad in any order that you wish. Each squad member is also given a special ability which the game calls a strike. With each successful attack, you build up this meter, and when it's full, you can unleash a powerful attack which could help change the tide of battle. Especially when you're getting ass rammed by a pack of feral dogs. Mike, will you take this seriously? Can you not inhale drugs for five minutes so we can finish this review? Oh, come on, dude. As usual with these types of RPGs, player choice is the name of the game, and you'll be given numerous options on how to tackle many of its obstacles, whether it be through dialogue or before a big fight. You can use your charisma during a conversation to prevent an ass whooping. Look at you! <laughs> Negotiate like proper merchants and all that! If you see a turret before battle, maybe you'll want to hack it or destroy it before it gets the upper hand. Maybe lockpick a door for a new path to your objective. And Exile did a tremendous job making sure there was never only one way of accomplishing your mission. Money, of course. You know me as a generous man. Things aren't all fine and dandy with Wasteland 3 though. The camera can still be a fucking nightmare especially if you're next to a tall building which blocks your view. The game is also rife with technical glitches, such as issuing a command in battle only for your unit to glitch the fuck out and not do anything, wasting precious action points and causing severe frustration. I've also encountered issues on the console version, such as low frame rate in certain areas and also audio lag. The biggest defender here though, is that during my 60 plus hours with the game, it crashed on me at least two dozen times. Jesus Christ. Hopefully some future patches will fix up a lot of these issues, but for the most part it didn't detract from what a great experience I had with the game. Hold up, hold up, my, my throat is too dry from too much ash, I need a beer, hold on. Hey Terry, can I get a beer? <clears throat> Thanks dude. Usually, isometric games aren't known for their amazing graphics. Wasteland 3 is no different. It's still a pretty good looking game nonetheless, although a few graphical issues popped up here and there to piss me off. It's not the greatest looking game by any means, but it's a huge leap from Wasteland 2, and I'm happy with that. 
The snow effects look great, especially when you're out traveling the world map, which by the way is a huge upgrade from Wasteland 2, which in that game, you're basically just an icon moving around the desert landscape. In Wasteland 3, you're given an armed snowmobile called the Kodiak to traverse Colorado, and making your way from one location to another is much more enjoyable with the added detail. Shifting from the desert landscape of Arizona to the snowy mountains of Colorado was an interesting choice for an exile to make. Thankfully, this change of scenery breathes new life into the series, which is so ironic since the world of Wasteland is so depressing and mostly everyone is dead. I noticed the game took on a more somber tone compared to Wasteland 2. Even the menus reflect this change with a darker, more ominous tint to them. Locations are packed with so much more detail this time around, and it really helps to show off a more lived-in world. I found a lot of joy just slowing down to take in the scenery. The game even incorporates fully mocap conversations for the first time in the series, and it really adds a lot of life to the world. What I do to you. Darcy's gonna do to all of Colorado. So squeal all you want. No one's coming to save you. The game does unfortunately struggle with texture popping, and some of those textures can be somewhat muddy. And it seems the game struggled to keep a consistent frame rate during certain times, even when nothing was really happening on screen. I mean, what the hell? The character models could have also used some work, because some of these people are almost as ghoulish as you, Mike. Go fuck a waste worm, Lenny! As is customary with these types of games, they are usually dialogue heavy. Thankfully, the voice acting is outstanding, and even better, every line is fully voiced this time around. Perhaps Microsoft's acquisition of NXL gave them the extra manpower to be able to pull this off. Rangers? What are you doing here? Well, I heard you was off in Colorado or, or somewhere. Each and every line of dialogue is acted out with so much emotion and passion, and it boosters the already great script even more. Each character you meet, whether friendly or batshit crazy, is so likable, in large part due to the great voice work. The music ain't bad either. The ambient tracks get the job done, but some of the original songs felt a little out of place and it sometimes made me want to quickly finish a battle so my ears would stop bleeding. I stopped going to the bazaar, a trader's haven, primarily because their depressing rendition of the song Monster Mash became so fucking annoying. Even after Vlad the Impaler was offering me 30% off all items, I just couldn't stand it anymore. I liked them. Put them on my 2007 iPod Nano. The sounds of the guns and creatures also have noticeable improvements. Each gun has more of an impact to them, especially your Kodiak's weapons, which sound absolutely devastating. There's also a few things more satisfying than the ping when you kill an enemy. We encountered some glaring audio glitches throughout our time with the game. Such as sound bites repeating non stop, which made me begin to wonder if I just smoked too much weed. Some audio lag, which made some characters sound like the robot from Black Sabbath's Iron Man. In one instance, where a male NPC was voiced by a female, I wasn't sure if this was a glitch or I was talking to a transgender character. It was weird. There were a ton of these issues, and it really made me wonder if the developers even tested this game before release. This game was honestly a glitch powerhouse at release, and I could have made a three-page list of all the shit I encountered with the game. With more and more people concerned about how a group is depicted in the media, we decided to go a step further and take a deeper look into the category of social progressiveness in video games. It's a hateful and sensitive world out there, Lenny. So Mike, how did you feel about the way this game handles social progressiveness? I'll commend them for providing strong female characters, who I honestly felt intimidated by. And on your way home, tell them to hire a better class of spy. But some of the games, like the Payasos, are racist depictions of Hispanic maniacs who are dressed as clowns, won't win this game any points in the progressive category. Hey, my month! 
Pull my finger. Oh, 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 no, I'm not falling for that one again, man. I won't do anything disgusting this time. Promise. <laughs> I mean anything to shut you up. Uh -huh. ah, I knew it, stinky cabron. Phew. In fact, we're taking some points away. Another group we felt that the developers depicted in the most racist way possible, like super racist, are the synths. Synths are robotic monstrosities with a conscience, and are often viewed as horrible monsters who just want to kill. The game even has missions where you go on racist hunts for rogue synths, and you must kill them. It's like the KKK for robots. We cap them as soon as we see them. Don't give them a chance to talk. And the game has slavery in it. Like, come on. What is this, the year 1864? Jeez. But given that this game takes place in a fictional wasteland, a direction the US may or may not be headed, where there are no rules or laws, is forgivable. So how would you rate this game, Mike? Oh, um, uh, well, on a scale from Fallout New Vegas to uh, a town with no name, um, anywhere between, um, I don't know, Baldur's Gate and uh, Fallout 3 DLC Mothership Zeta. That's a great critique, Mike, but I don't think anyone's gonna understand what the fuck you're talking about. So just, just tell us if you would recommend this game or not. Uh, yeah, sure, whatever. Great. Um, I would also recommend this game, especially if you're fans of uh, RPGs like Fallout or isometric games like XCOM or Divinity. Wasteland 3 is available on Xbox and PC, and it's also on the Xbox Game Pass, so definitely go check it out. But um, we definitely love making this review for you guys. If you would like to have more, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and share the video. Any other ending comments, Mike? 